a lot of storylines to talk to the coach today uh, uh, and, and everything else going on in the world with the Masters next week. Brought to you by our friends at Crane Works. Yeah, he is on the JohnstonRVCenter.com. The coach presented by the Rental Works Division of Crane Works. Good morning, Coach. How are you? I'm doing okay. I've been practicing trying to uh, name machines. Uh, not name them, but tell you what they are. We finally showed what you got right. I think it was oh, the uh, – I can't remember which one it was now. I think it was congratulations the uh, – Congratulations to me. Yeah, congratulations <laughs> to you. You're one, you're one for four. You're shooting 25% right now uh, on the videos we have showed. I, I like – this is my kind of final four. I don't know about you as a guy that is a, a basketball lifer and knows the game far better than I ever will, but I like to see the big-name blue blood teams in my final four. Well, I can see that. I understand that. And uh, I guess that's the, the uh, country likes to see that and. You know, there there are times that you play in a tournament and you don't you're fortunate enough not to play somebody that can beat you. Uh, I, I've heard ghost coaches say it many times. I've said, you know, you're just fortunate that you didn't catch a matchup that you didn't 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 like, or that somebody gets hurt or something happens that you just move you know you move on up. And that, that you can very easily go through a tournament and never play the best team to beat you because you, because the tournament just falls that way. So it's a little bit of luck involved in it. But uh, in the in the Duke Carolina game, uh, Duke is going. You, you you've got to be able to guard the dribbler. If you can't guard the guy that dribbles the basketball, that then you're going to get killed. He's going to get something cheap. He's going to get fouled. He's going to throw the lob pass to the backside of the of the offense, and he is going to throw the ball to the three point shooter. If the three point shooter's guy comes over and helps, so you got to guard the dribbler. And what Duke has done, what Duke is going to do, not like I did necessarily at, at Lyle Miramont, but they're going to take some time off the clock and move fast with it, I think. And when you get through looking at the stats, you will see less threes by them than you will Carolina. Now, Carolina's and uh, Duke's got to guard the they got to guard the threes, but I would say guarding the dribbler and shortening the game in that game is big for me. Coach Coach K is uh, obviously a storyline in this, but he made a yeah. point. He made a point to say, "Let's stop talking about winning for the old man. Let's talk about the players." Uh, you've always told me that most of the work done by coaches are done preparing for a game, and then the players have to ex- execute. Right? Uh, Co- Coach K has to get out of the way and let his players play, and all of a sudden. Both them and North Carolina, the, the yeah. coaches are out of the way, and it seems like these players are playing pretty good for them. Yeah, I tell you something very interesting, and the coaches, and I'm not the schools in this state don't do it. And, and the, what won the game for you is that they don't play a lot of zone defense, but they they lined up in a two three, and it was one of the worst two threes I've ever seen, and very effective. <laughs> what made it bad? <laughs> tell tell educate it, us. Well, they didn't have the, they didn't have the right coverage. They they had a guy behind it. Just they wasn't really hu- hustling on it. They just got the two three to keep those guys from dribbling down through there to stop the dribble, and it was so darn effective. And, and um, other people don't do that. There are a lot of people and coaches who say if you if you play any zone, you're a bad coach. Well, I think you're a smart one. Uh, I, I think it. Uh, I think it's you. Now, do we use it all the time? No. But I think if they're dribble penetrating, I think that I think I want to explain things where our audience that listens to this show every day understands it. If you can stop the penetration of the but the dribble at times, you look at it for a few trips, then you go back man. But you change the tempo of the game a little bit, and I think that's big. The coach Wimp Sanderson with us on the JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. He joins us each week courtesy of the Rental Works Division of Crane Works. Coach K not playing zone goes back to Bobby Knight. He despised his own, didn't he? Yeah. Well, I mean, he didn't like it, but he, he lined up one time in at the end. It's, it's, not, it's not that you, fellas, it's not that you like or dislike the zone. It's, it's that it's, a, it's a, an opportunity for you to cut down on what they're hurting you with for just a few trips and change what they do, all of a sudden that point guard comes out there, and he's been going one-on-one, going to the basket. Now he's got five guys guarding him. Not guarding him, but he's got – they're guarding the basketball wherever he is. So, uh, and, and what you have to do in coaching is have a good zone and keep it and be, un, be understanding how to run it, but not run it a lot, but just use it at times. I think it makes sense a lot. 
uh, and I know you know this, but for our for our listeners and viewers, um, I always like to point this out going into Final Four weekend. Think of everything that Duke, North Carolina, Villanova, and Kansas have accomplished since November. Yeah. And now they're here at the Final Four. And for them to be national champions and cut the net down, they still have to win two more games yeah. to, to do that. I mean, that yeah. is... That is so mind-boggling to me how, how long the season is, how many things you have to accomplish just to get to the Final Four, and now you've got to win two games against two teams that are equally as hard well, as you. This, this, is, this is so hard to do. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, you've, either won, you've, you've probably played three games in your tournament, whether you wanted it or not. you probably played three games. And now you turn around now, you've already played four. Mm-hmm. You play, you've played seven games. And you're undefeated. You played good. The other teams played bad. Uh, Kentucky caught uh, St. Peter's, wasn't ready to play, and got beat. You know, the matchups are good for you. This goes on, you know. I don't really, you know, and I don't say this about Kansas for being fortunate, but I will. You know, the the really good player that got that, that got hurt for, for Villanova is a factor in the game. I, that's, I don't mean that to be ugly, but. You just look at all the little things that happen for that. That you got a nine-game series, and you got to be better than your opponent nine straight times. And we get this final four. Three of these final four are going to be going to lose. So, uh, pretty interesting. Um, I know you know Andy Kennedy very well, and Philip Pearson. I if I remember I correctly, you recruited to Alabama. Yeah. Um, I, I they they just got a couple of guys in the portal. They were rebuilding UAB's basketball program. Talk about the importance of recruiting and, and how do you think Andy and Philip are as recruiters and what they're trying to do at UAB? Well, I think they're going to do fine. They'll go, they're going to go to the transfer portal and get players and also get a, they're going to sprinkle it in with some some freshman kids they like. And so they like to have somebody they think can play has a future. And then they get the guys that already have watched to play. And then you got to work to get them. Getting in the NCAA tournament will certainly help that group. Uh, we're we're living we're living with the transfer. I don't like it at all. I think it's so unfair uh, to kids who are not going to be seen much because uh, people are going to the transfer portal. I think it's so unfair, and I don't I don't want to get an unfair thing because you're being positive with it. But for the Furmans and the Jacksonvilles to have two good players that have really played well for them, they're all excited about having another good team, and all of a sudden somebody comes and gets them. I, 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 yeah, but, but, went, went but, to your point, though. I think I saw this correctly, and and uh, and I think Karen, one of our great right. female listeners, DM'd me. Murray State, who just came off of an, a great Lost year, all but one. I think they've only got one or two yeah. players left yeah. on their roster right yeah. now. Just yeah. two players. That, 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 yeah, and so you're looking. You're, you're you're coaching. You're coaching this day and time, one game at one year at a time. You're not trying to build a program. And then thirdly, that nobody talks about. It's if we're if we're if we're for kids to get to get degrees academically, then jumping around and trying to graduate and trying to go here and trying to go there is much more difficult. And it might might be that a fairly good borderline player won't graduate. And the other thing, and I'll, I'll hush this: you get to the edge and you have you have to, you have decided you want to transfer. All of a sudden, the two schools you thought you could go to don't take you. Now your school is the school that you just left. They've got thirteen, and so you're you sit there not with those no scholarship, and those things are happening so occasionally. So I'm not whatever. It's they're here to stay, and the NIL is here to stay. So there's not much you can do about it. But it it is it is something you have to be very cautious about. And teams will be good based on the transfer portal. They will, and I know I get what you and Jim are saying, but I'll also point out that Jacksonville State made the NCAA tournament this year and three they're, maybe their three best players, their two leading scorers were transfers. And their big center yeah. transferred from North Carolina. Yeah, so that's right. I, I mean, I, well, and I completely understand what you're saying. And Murray State's a great example. you got to ride the wave. But, yeah, it can work the other way, too, sometimes. Yeah, well, yeah, you can. Occasionally it can. You, you know, Alabama's in football is in a situation where, you know, they, they know, they know there's a running back and running back's interested in, come in there and they take one you know they take the guy last year year before last from tennessee a lineman they take you know, they just don't take many because there's so many kids they want to go where there's success where they see that where they see 
Um, and I, my my other question, without getting on this show and being really negative about it, is, you know, the the money that they give, we kid about they used to give them money and all that kind of stuff. The the money that they give causes so much problems as you go through it with the parents, in that the right tackle is getting more than the left tackle, and your guy's playing a lot better, and it becomes a little bit of a of a mental thing, and and then. Kids transfer because you get on to them. You try to coach them. They don't appreciate it. And then they leave and wish they didn't. It's just, you know, it's a the money thing. I just don't know the answer to that, y'all. I do think and I do think maybe what about this? What if a guy really wants him all guys can can get NIL after the first year? Right. So and, in other words, as a freshman yeah. you're not eligible to get it. No. Yeah. yeah, that you you are able that we are able to look at you and see if you and my coaches are getting some money up to keep you because you're really playing good as a freshman. But maybe after one year, do well, that. I, I would think that would help it a little bit. I'm, I'm not, I, I'm not naive and I'm not old fashioned. That's what that's that's the new that's the new sports that we have. Yeah, but um, either that or we got to cap it some way. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think either one of those would stand up in court, and that's where it would end up. Yeah, I, I, wanted, yeah, you're I, wanted, right. I wanted to ask you, though, if you were coaching right now, I mean, I'm looking at the rankings of the recruiting classes coming in, and you have Duke, Arkansas, Alabama, and Kansas, the top four recruiting classes coming in. Uh, and Musselman's got three McDonald All-Americans. Nate's got a great recruiting class coming in. Um, would you, Would you, if you were still coaching, would you still be doing it with the old-fashioned recruiting of, of high school athletes? Would you be doing a mixture of both, high school and portal, or would you be all in on, on just recreating your roster every year? How would, would, you, how would you be doing I would it? Do a mix, I would do a mixture. If I had high school kids that I thought could play, you know, I, I look at, and I've said this on this show, I, I look at Keith Askin, who played 12 years in the pros. I probably I, I got all kind of calls to come look at him. I probably would have not, never looked at him if I could have gone to the transfer portal and gotten somebody. I said, I ain't got time to go see him. And I go see him, and that's just an easy example. And he comes out, he's he's going to be a really good player, not quite ready yet, but really going to be good and turned out to be very good. Yeah, so long-time nba or yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, and he was a great player for us going in the Hall of Fame this year, the Alabama Sports Hall of Fame. It, it's just – I would say that's a very good question, and the answer is I would do a little of both. I would try to get me some freshmen. Um, they got the new guy at Mississippi State. Um, I would I don't know him as good and bad, I think, but uh, he probably has recruited a lot, and I, I think he brought the two assistants with him. And you've got to get players to play. Yes, you can get them to play the way you want them to play, but you got to get them first. And uh, it... it it's hard. It's not easy to get the right guys and fit them in the way. One good thing you can see them. You can see them, and you know they're pretty good. But you got to be darn sure they're okay off the court. Because if they're not, and they they come in, and they're the point guard, and the two guard gets more money, we got problems. <laughs> All right, so, two, problem. two quick questions before you go. Okay. Tiger's plane was in Augusta yesterday. Do you think yeah. he plays in the Masters? I think there's a good chance. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't bet on it. Okay. Yeah. He I played. He played a full eighteen played yesterday. 18. I yeah. mean, uh, you hope he does. I think we all hope he does. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. I, I okay. think. I. I would say to answer your question. I hope he does, but it wouldn't shock me if he doesn't. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Uh, he got the the one one of the big problems he had. Uh, not only was the leg was one of the heels, and the heel is what you push off to, you know, for your power, and I, that that to me is is you know walking with your heel is, is hard so yeah. If, yeah. if your heel is hurt so yeah supposedly I, it hasn't affected his swing much if any at all yeah. it's really just the walking that he's concerned I think about JT supposedly. went and play, JT went and played with him yep yep and um so it, it'll be it'll be interesting I, I think if he if he were to do that that his term would be far between it would be, it would be, it'd be, it'd be any. Um, and uh, to before you tell us about Rental Works, your pick to win this thing in the final four, who are you going with? Um, I'll go with Kansas. Okay. 
Kansas. Kansas. Uh, he is the coach, Wimp Sanderson. And, and I know nothing about who's going to be. Oh, about I'll be at Kansas. Yeah. Reynolds works the division of Crane Works. Been up Crane Works and talked about all the equipment. Boy, they got great equipment. All the equipment you need for any DIY projects from chainsaws to skid steers. They have it all. Uh, Ryan and I went up there. And David Upton, uh, I didn't see him, but uh, we went up there and he he bought these machines out, and I tried to name them. I couldn't name them, but they were great machines. They do a great job. Hopefully, if you need to uh, rent something, Crane Works is a place to go. So give them. Oh, the best thing to do is just look on the, on the internet. So that's what they want me to tell you to do. That's go right. CraneWorks.com. CraneWorks.com. Crane okay, guys. Well, thank you. Love you. All right. Love you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That is the coach, Wimp Sanderson, with us on the <laughs> JohnstonRVCenter.com hotline. My bad rock started to have the screen up to hang up on him. Coach presented each week by the Rental Works Division of Crane World. 